Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this video, I am going to be testing and reviewing the Vivor Cut 50P Plasma Cutter. I want to say thanks to Vivor for sending this to me at no cost for the purpose of this review. This is a dual voltage machine. It will run on 110, 120 volts, as well as 220 or 240, and does come with an adapter. There are two nearly identical models on Vivor's website, a Cut 50 and a Cut 50P. This one is the Cut 50P with Pilot Arc. If you go there to purchase one, be careful, make sure you're getting the one you'll want. It's not hard to tell. The Cut 50P with Pilot Arc has four connections down here. The Cut 50 without Pilot Arc only has three. The Cut 50P with Pilot Arc is currently $205 on Vivor's website. And the Cut 50 non-P without Pilot Arc is $215. With that being said, let's go back and take a look at the unboxing and the setup and see how that went. And then when we're done with that, we'll come back and we'll fire it up and we'll do some cutting and see how well it worked. Let's see what we got in here. Oh yeah, here's a box of goodies. We have instructions, some hose clamps, some brass fittings, and some screws. We have a long piece of braided clear hose. This is going to be our ground clamp. Here is our 110 to 220, or excuse me, our 220 to 110 adapter. This is going to be our torch. And it looks like we have a nice AG60 torch in the kit. And this does have an external regulator you got to put on. There is our external regulator. It looks like a fairly nice one. It has a water separator and a filter built into it. Here we go. All right, on the front. Unlike most Vivor stuff, which is blue, this is orange. On the front, we have, looks like we don't have anything but an amperage adjustment on it. Over here we have, I'm guessing, two lights, a power light and possibly an overheat light. And this is going to be our amperage readout. And we have four plug-ins in the front, torch, pilot arc. That's going to be for our trigger switch and then for our ground clamp. And on the back, we have on-off switch, of course, power with the strain relief. We have a hose for gas or for, of course, in this case, air pressure. I have called Vivor out in the past for releasing some pretty sketchy manuals with bad English. And sometimes they don't even go with the machine that you purchased. So I think it's only fair to give them props when I see a good manual. This manual covers the Cut 50 and the Cut 50P, the only difference being... One has pilot arc and the other does not. And of course it has a typical safety stuff, but it's got a lot of good pictures, a lot of tech specs, a lot of info on how to use it, how to set it up. The English is all good. There is a lot of good info in this for the beginner. Looking at assembling it, they show two threaded holes. I don't know if you can see it. They show two threaded holes on the back of the machine that the little bracket for the air regulator goes into and I don't have those holes on the back of this machine. There's nothing back here. That's obviously where it's going to have to go, but I don't mind drilling holes, but I'm a little bit uncomfortable drilling when I don't know what's behind what I'm drilling. Okay, I popped the top off of this just to make sure I can safely drill two holes in the back without hitting anything of importance. And it is nice to note while it's off that it does appear to have a pretty nice looking main board. I mean, it's laid out nice. It looks like it's made nice. It's very clean. Um, yeah, I don't really have too much to complain about what it looks like on the inside. And yes, you are clear to punch two holes. If you can see them, if you look in the back where... These two holes are going to be right about there where my two fingers are. It, there is nothing. If you stay above the fan, you are clear to punch those holes in it. I have the regulator and gauge mounted. The gauge, of course, mounts directly on the regulator. 
I mounted it a little bit higher than what they called for in the manual, but that's so to put the knob up over the top so that when I'm looking at it from the front, I can actually see the location of the knob so I can just reach to adjust it. Now they provide about 10 feet of this braided hose and two of the barbed fittings like they think you're probably going to have to go from the inlet side over to a compressor with this hose. Me, I just stick on my favorite air fitting, the one I use here. They did not provide that, and I don't blame them. If they did, it probably wouldn't be the one that you use, and they can't provide every flavor of them ever made. So let's take a quick look at this torch it comes with. Vivor claims it is five meters long. Also comes with two extra electrodes and two extra tips, and three of those little wire standoffs that clip into the the porcelain head of the torch so this is an ag60 torch and it is a nice one i like this strain relief on the end this kind of wobble i really appreciate that these are my favorite types of torches i just love the way they fit my hand i like the the trigger safety here so when you set it down it doesn't accidentally go off um I like everything about these except the cost of consumables, but to me, it's worth it. It's got a nice rubber cover over it. Time to do some cutting. Let's test this thing out. I am plugged into a 110 volt outlet. Actually, I'm about 117, 118 volts here. This is a 20 amp circuit. I am set to 50 PSI. This is a the old Harbor Freight Central Pneumatic 21 gallon, 125 PSI air compressor. And I'm gonna start out just cutting a piece of sheet metal. Let's switch this on. And you'll note that it does have a pretty loud fan. Let's um, unplug the compressor. It's fully charged so it doesn't start. Turned all the way down on 110 volts. It says I'm at 21.1 amps. Let's get the ground clamp over here. We'll put the ground clamp directly on the part. Okay, this is 3 16 flat bar and got a weld on the back of it there but I think we'll cut through that anyway and um, we'll see how well it works. I'll probably leave it set on 21 amps for now. We'll see how well it works on 21 amps and if we need to we'll turn it up. Okay, it's not cutting through that cleanly at 20 amps, so let's turn it up. Okay, we're now at 30 amps, or actually 30.4. Let's see if it'll make a clean cut through it there. Okay, it just popped my breaker after about, what, six, seven seconds on 30 amps. Okay, it was making a pretty clean cut on that. You can see with it set to 30 amps and 50 PSI. I have since down, turned it down to 25 amps and turned the pressure up to 60. Let's see if we can cut this 3 16 at 25 amps on my 20 amp circuit without popping the breaker. 
I'm probably going to say no, it'll pop the breaker, but let's give it a shot. Okay, no, it won't. I didn't think so. It was cutting cleanly, but it kept going on and off. Um, I think probably eighth inch is going to be about its limit on a 20 amp circuit. Okay, we are now plugged into my 220 volt outlet. So this is a piece of 3 8 angle. I've drilled some holes in it when I was doing the Vivor drill bit sharpening test. Let's see if we can slice some of this off. Okay, I have turned it up to 40 amps. Let's see if we can cut this. I'll tell you, that's kind of an awkward position. Let me see if I can find a slightly better position for that. Maybe if I come at me, let's try that. That was about as far as I could go without getting my hand trapped by something. Let's try the rest of that. Uh, I couldn't have picked anything more awkward than this. Cuts 3 8 on 40 amps without a problem. Trying to use that standoff, dragging along that rough surface kind of made me jerk around a little bit more than I normally would. But let's take a look at that cut. All right, we cut that pretty cleanly. I'm not gonna complain about that. How, how jaggedy it looks, that was just me. Um, yeah, that's, that's all me. And yes, that is annoying. I got something thicker. I think I got some half inch floating around. Let's give it a shot. Well, I screwed up and didn't have the camera turned on for my first couple of cuts across that half inch. But here's one of them here. You can see I got a very nice cut on that. Very thin sliver of it too. But um, let's do it again. Half inch flat bar machine is maxed out at 51.4 amps, we're on 220, 240 volts, and we're set to 70 PSI. Here it is. I'm gonna break the um, slag off it. Damn, thing's heavy. Here the slag broke, can you see it? There you go, the slag broke right off. And there is our cut. See if I can get it on camera for you better than that. There we go, there is our cut on half inch steel plate. Looking pretty good. Ow, getting hot too. So I've made a lot more cuts with this machine than what you've seen in the video. I've probably got 25 to 30 cuts on it, varying thickness material, you know, from 16 gauge sheet metal all the way up to half inch steel plate. So it's time to sum this up. Let's start with my likes and my dislikes. On the like side, I really like the long torch. 
it's really, really nice to have 15 feet or 16 feet, whatever 5 meters is, of torch lead. I really like the AG60 torch. I like the way they feel in my hand. I like the way they cut. I really, it's become my favorite torch. I very much like the simplistic nature of it with only two settings, air pressure and amperage. That makes it so nice just to get it out and turn it on. You don't got to keep fiddling with different adjustments that you might not even understand what they do. And when something doesn't work right, it limits how many different places and how many things you have to check to find out what the problem is. It's got a pretty nice long power cord. It comes with the, with the 220 on it, which is I would much prefer to have it with this and a 110 adapter than the other way around. And it does come with a 110 adapter. So that's pretty nice as well. And I like the fact that it cut really smooth. I mean, that's that was a big advantage on 220. It cuts really smooth. I like the fact that it's got some, some way to, you know, roll the cabling up. Even though it's something just as simple as that, it does give you a way to store the cable a little nicer than something that doesn't have that. Now on to my dislikes. I don't like the fact that the regulator is still in the back. I mean, I realize that's kind of just something that you're going to get with this price point of plasma cutter, but I would really like to see the gauge and the adjustment moved around in the front where you can get to it. I also don't like the fact that there were no threaded holes to mount the, um, to mount the regulator that I had to actually use self tappers to, um, to get those put in. Also, considering how considering how long and stout the torch lead is, I think that ground cable is a little short and wimpy. It's about five feet long. That's also not that hard to fix. But considering how long and how stout that torch cable is, it sure would have been nice if they could have put in a little bit longer, stouter ground cable. Again, not that big of a deal, not a deal breaker, especially at this price point. Another minor complaint is the machine can only be de turned down to where it reads 21 amps on the front panel. And I suspect that's about what it draws because on my 20 amp 110 volt circuit, after 12 to 15 seconds of cutting, it pops the breaker. If it could be turned down just a wee bit more, say to 15 or 18 amps, it would be a much more viable machine for the home user who's running it off the typical US 20 amp you know, residential appliance circuit. Now, if you have a 25 or 30 amp industrial 110 volt circuit, or you're only planning on running it off 220, that won't be a problem. So what are my final thoughts on the beautiful black and orange Vivor Cut 50P plasma cutter with Pilot Arc? Well, I honestly think it's a pretty solid entry into the $200 plasma cutter market. If you can live with or fix the minor shortcomings I mentioned and you like the simplistic nature of it, and I admit that I do, then I think you'll be pretty darn happy with it. Thanks again to Vivor for sending this out. There will be an affiliate link and coupon code below. And thanks to all of you for watching my video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.